are you looking at forming a trust and you're wondering what are the processes and steps of registering this trust very simple you reach out to a professional who deals with trust formations such as ourselves and then you say listen i want to form a trust and then they'll ask you relevant question to say is it really applicable to you because i'll be honest with you guys trust is not necessarily applicable to everyone depends on various factors what is the logic your objective of forming a trust might differ to me and you find that but we've got the same portfolio does it mean that we both need to have a trust no not necessarily some people take covers instead of moving their properties in the trust when they're still alive they know that upon death those assets will yes there are disadvantages and advantages of uh, all the decisions that you can potentially make okay now let's assume that you want to go ahead after the discussions with Shini boy you've determined to say listen i want to have a trust trust is ideal for me Shini boy obviously will give you a form that is going to tell us uh, who's going to be the, the trustees it's very important that within who's going to be the trustees if the founding trustees are related to each other and are also beneficial as the master of the higher court is going to require what you call an independent trustee okay it's going to be someone who's going to oversee to ensure that the trustees uh, observe the the, the 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 clauses and the regulations of the that comes with the trust deed and also the trust property control act and obviously they're acting within the right frameworks okay so that is typical expectations from the trustees but at the end of the day all the trustees are equal in in front of the law that's one thing that guys need to be careful so you might then want to decide who's going to be your independent trustees you fill in that form who's going to be beneficiaries very very important you fill out that form this is where it gets very interesting people say do i want to make my baby mama do i want to make my baby mama a beneficiary of my trust or do i want to how do i make the beneficiary of my my mother, there's various discussions around that who has to be the beneficiary of a particular trust. And it gets very interesting. Once you form that information, you come to us, we consult further and we draft um, a trust deed. We ensure that the trust deed is actually uh, drafted. And then once it's done, it will go through the discussions back and forth. And then we then obviously then send it to you, print it out. And then uh, you sign it up with all the relevant parties that necessarily need to sign, which is other trustees. Then the original forms need to be sent back to our offices originally because the master doesn't take uh, copies at this stage. So everything must be originally uh, set, signed. And then even the documents, supporting documents that will necessarily need things like IDs, uh, will need to be originally certified and couriered to the office. So everything is still manual, unfortunately. So that's where some of people get a bit frustrated. But yeah. So and then and then once we then we uh, obviously put other supporting documents that are necessary for lodgement. Then we do the lodgement with the master. Then upon the master being happy that everything is is quieter, then. They send the letter of authority. The letter of authority is the one that is going to inform that the trustees appointed by the master is actually uh, allowed now to act as trustees. Then what is the basic thing that now the trustees need to do? The founder obviously needs to ensure that transfer the initial donations. And that's very, very important. And that's one of the reasons why by law you're required now to open a bank account as trustee so that you can then receive that particular donation from the founder. You may find that you're the founder and there's a trustee at the same time. There's nothing wrong with that. It's more than happy. You're more than welcome to do that. Then that is process is done. It's very important that you register with SARS. Very, 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 very important. You then register with SARS. Uh, you register one of the trustees must be what you call representative uh, uh Registered representative, rather, uh, with uh, SARS is the point of contact, is the main person that SARS kind of hold accountable for the affairs of the trust. And it, it's even required, by the way, with a company. So you still need to do that. So they're technically similar things. It's just that the trust registration with SARS is not yet automatic because with companies, once you register with CIPC, it automatically the company gets registered for tax, unlike trust. Trust is still manual based. Hopefully, we'll get there at some point. Then gets to be registered automatically, uh, manually in this process. Unfortunately, so you still do that. Once you do that, then you can trade. 
Then let's say now you've got a company underneath the trust. This is where you come in. You then register, obviously, the company, but it still needs to link the relationship between the trust and the company. This is where important of inaugural resolutions, uh, share certificate, share registers, uh, directors registers are necessary so that you formalize the whole structure. And that is the basic structure that I can give to first time home property investors, even for that matter, any advanced property investor who wants to go out there and do what they need to do. You're more than welcome to reach out to me. Let's have fun. There's going to be a lot and lot and lot of sessions. You take advantage of those. We're going to go big in 2024. Right? Good luck.